Two fans, last week we brought you part one of the Wheel Blacks' journey on their road to Worlds. This week we travel a little further afield, where the Wheel Blacks take it to our toughest competition on two continents. The next port on our march to the Worlds is the Oceania Champs in South Africa. We get to play against Japan, the host South Africa and Australia. You know, when you go away to tournaments and trips, uh, you experience things. And so hopefully the newer players will come back that much more experience and the trust will have grown that much more. That's what we're aiming for. Just thinking about this whole Oceania, I know when I've been talking to people coming here, they said, oh, what's it about? Well, it's the zonal qualifiers and the team that wins it goes to Worlds. But, you know, we go because of Athens and because we're host. So it's a bit of a nothing tournament. I started thinking about that and I thought, that's bullshit. It's a very important tournament. It's an important tournament because it's halfway in our campaign. It's a real chance to solidify from what we've done in this year as our build-up year. And on top of that, um, our ranking's on the line. And if we don't win it, then we're fifth or eighth or 200th. And that has implications, a la sausage sizzles. It's actually a very important tournament because a number of things on the line. With our world ranking, if we don't win this, then it may have big impact on our funding. 91, 93, 95, we took regional teams over to Aussie to compete in their nationals. Uh, 95, the first World Blacks were formed. We were told in 95, there's no you know, money for you, you need a, a history. Um, and our coach at the time, Ken Clearwater, he just entered us into the World Cup. And we thought, well, what's this going to cost? We're looking to think end of 50, 60 grand. You know, we started, it was, it was, you know, the mad, good old mad butcher doing a barbecue, sausage sizzle outside his place. I mean, hell of a lot of fun, raised a couple of hundred bucks. You know, now we're talking budgets of $100,000, $150,000. For guys like Jeremy and Dan, wheelchair rugby has been their entree into a globe-trotting lifestyle. Uh, I'm playing for a team in Alabama called Lakeshore. And uh, so I was over there for two weeks just getting my games in. There's all these rules about having an import. If you play over there, you have to play games before December 15th to be eligible to play postseason. So it was just very much about that. Two weeks, quick trip. Played a tournament and uh, came over here. And uh, Austin, Texas, playing for the Texas Stampede. Two-time two time defending before. national champions, yep. That's right. As well as my uh, fourth season for them now, so. This trip gives us a chance to give the South African team a leg up. They'll be lucky to make Worlds even with a Kiwi coach, ex Wheel Black Peter Martin, and a taste of our skipper's tactics. Our ball carriers all know that if we're on that side of the one, we're going to stay on that side and we're going to go to the sideline. Can you see the point of it? To draw the space. No. But it makes a lot of sense though. Peter, that's why you always said stop the blocker. Exactly. Stop the blocker. Because like he says, if the blocker's stopped dead, you're isolating the ball carrier, he's going to get desperate. Well, one of our objectives is to uh, help them develop because they are a part of our zone. And World Tree Rugby, you know, it's just we want to develop it worldwide. So we're, uh, we're bringing them into our camp. We'll play against them. We're, we're talking to them about what we do and stuff that we do back in New Zealand. And yeah, just trying to help them out and develop. We've got a lot of experienced players now. We've been playing for years now. And uh, we, can, we can offer them that. So they can learn, they can learn a whole lot from us as, as players and uh, as a team. So that's what basically we're going to do for them. Try and get them up there. When the Wheel Blacks travel, we take an entourage of helpers and caregivers. Someone's missing. One, two, three. We do need help, especially in the morning. Good morning, Jeremy. Good morning, boys. How's it going? You don't want to see this first thing in the morning, I'm telling you. And just seeing how far we've come in a year, it's pretty good. It's good to see. It's too early for this shit. It's too frustrating. Just uh, getting up, just about to, to go, uh, is this term to uh, drop the kids off at the pool? Um, uh, yeah, this is uh, my buddy, he keeps all my urine for the night. Um, yeah, this is just a night's worth, probably about two litres. So uh, I'll drop that off too. To be brutally honest, life in a wheelchair wouldn't be 
that bad if it wasn't for toileting issues. It pretty much rules your life. Well, wow. fancy bumping into you guys here. Yeah. <laughs> Probably about um, half an hour ago. Right, I got Kathy to uh, insert a um, suppository yeah, into my ass. So, yeah, that just helps me go. Right, to the toilet. Some guys like uh, Jai, he's got his daily routine. Kathy came in earlier to help him and instead of the uh, suppository, he sat in his bed for a while waiting for them to work and then uh, gets up and sits on the toilet for another uh, half an hour, three quarters of an hour, whatever it takes you know, for it to come, for it to work. So when you first uh, end up in a chair, it's, it's one of those things that's a wee bit frustrating for a while and then uh, you just learn to, to manage it and um, make time for it, obviously. And uh, you, then, you know, after a few years of doing it, you slowly get used to it, it just becomes part of your routine and part of life. Bit of early morning video analysis going on here. I, uh, I use a, a catheter bag during the day and I, and I cath in the morning, so that takes me a good, uh, by the time I get up into my chair, I, I, I um, have to self-cath and empty my bladder out and, uh, and then clean uh, my night bags out and, uh, um, that takes that sort of a process and that takes a while too so you know i have to do exactly the same thing at night before i get into bed as well so it's 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 all time consuming stuff but uh, like i said you didn't really learn to manage it and it takes obviously it takes a lot longer than what an able-bodied person does to get ready to go to bed and and uh, get out of bed in the morning as well so i'm um jeremy's mum so um i've been you know part of the the routine for 13 years i don't don't feel sad about it, no, because it's it's part of our lives now, you know. I mean, at first it was, when it first happened, I thought, oh, my God, how are we going to go on? And, and all I ever wanted to do was swap places with Jeremy and, and take on what he had to take on, but, of course, that doesn't happen. So, um, no, it just becomes part of your life, and to see the way that they deal with it, to see their humour, um, you know, I mean, they take the piss out of us and we can do the same to them, and I think they're just amazing, you know. No, we're not. Hang on, let me oh, connect sorry. you. Oh, sorry. Not connected. Okay, that yeah, enough? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bit of stretch. Uh, stops your uh, getting a thing we call a drop foot. It stops your ankle from permanently sitting like that. So I just wake up in the morning and do it every uh, second morning or so and just stretch my uh, ankles and, and uh, hamstrings like just by holding down my knees and putting my head between my knees. We're going to play the Oceania tournament in the stadium inside a casino outside Johannesburg. It's pretty huge compared to where I've ever played before, but it looks a bit like the Westbank Stadium in Christchurch where we're going to have the World Cup, so it'll be a good um, getting used to the crowd up top and just focusing on what we're doing down here, so that when we get to the Westpac Stadium at the World Cup, it's all just normal. Most of us have bad hand function, and that makes everything harder. It's different for each of us. Awesome. I'm a three-pointer, so my hands are basically as good as you can get. I can, I can, I can open and close them, but uh, they're pretty weak as far as grip strength and uh, loss of some movement in the thumbs. I'm one down from Dan, 2.5. Our points are decided through a process called classification. I'm going to try and move you and you stay in the same spot. Yeah? Okay. So, hold. A panel of assessors puts us through a series of tests to figure out our level of function, and we get a rating between 0.5 and 3.5. Okay. Five. Five. Right. 